so in the last lecture we have seen this about garbage collection and today we will quickly go through this program for garbage collection so here in this code we have created this one class class temp in the class temp we have written a simple function function do calculation <coughs> and uh, created one variable and this will print that variable okay and for the class temp we have overridden the finalize method then we have written this another class that is finalize demo class we have one constructor written for this whatever value this constructor will accept it will initialize the variable i with that value we have written main function here inside this main function inside this main function we create an object of this finalize demo class so finalize demo class we have created an object like like here next line we have created another object for this class temp so we have created two object one object for the finalize demo class another object for the temp class now we know what do you mean by garbage collection garbage collection is basically when any object is no longer needed or is no longer referenced further in your code so the memory occupied by that object gets released automatically again it is decided by the system so what we are trying to do here is we uh, what we have done finalize demo is equal to null so finalize demo is equal to null means this we in this line we have created the finalize demo object and finalize demo is equal to null it means we don't want this finalize demo object to refer any mem any particular memory area we don't want to use this finalize demo object here after so is equal to null then temp dot do calculation using the object of class temp you calculate this function and after that you set that object is equal to null i mean here after this line we don't want this temp object to be alive uh, further okay we have assigned is equal to null and after that after that since we know garbage collection it happens sporadically sporadically means even if it is if it is fed by the system <clears throat> the garbage collection process gets initiated again it is not in the hands of a programmer but again to ensure that garbage collection should happen to invoke that uh, that mechanism there is a system dot gc system dot gc gc is garbage collector okay is a function there if you call that particular function the so garbage collection process gets initiated so when you when you run this code so basically what do you expect that finalize demo is equal to null and temp is equal to null so you want garbage collection to run for finalize demo first and for temp is equal to null you want garbage collection to happen for the temp object and then the next turn but again but again i have copied that particular code here and i will run run this code for you say here you see finalize demo finalize method is called for finalize demo first and finalize method is called for the temp object then in then the next time okay let me run it few more temp finalize method called for temp okay so this particular output basically it is it depends on the system whether to go for garbage collection or not even if you if you say object number 1 uh, is equal to null i mean you released the memory occupied i mean you, you your first object number 1 it does not point to any particular memory location and after that object number 2 is equal to null you have written but it is not like the case ki object 1 finalize method will get called for object 1 first so this will be a random behavior okay for the in, in the case of finalize in the case of finalize method and in the case of garbage output so temp and finalize demo if you if you rerun the program for couple of times you might see that finalize demo will appear first and this finalize for temp will appear next i mean though i have used system.gc here to somehow make sure the finalize method is indeed called 
but don't rely on it whether it is it will be called or not it will doesn't call you cannot be sure if it if it even gets called so which will which line will get first printed again it is not at all decided okay this is for garbage correction एंड जनरल फॉर्म फॉर द फाइनलाइज मेथड जो फाइनलाइज मेथड हमने यूज किया है उसका जनरल फॉर्म होता है इस तरीके से आपको लिखना पड़ेगा प्रोटेक्टेड वाइड फाइनलाइज थ्रू ओके सो द नेक्स्ट इज अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट द स्टैटिक की वर्ड ओके सो वी विल बी सींग स्टैटिक की वर्ड विथ रेफरेंस टू स्टैटिक वेरिएबल अ वेरिएबल कैन बी स्टैटिक ए फंक्शन कैन बी स्टैटिक and we will try to create a static scope a scope or a static scope okay so <clears throat> let's try to see the program and with the help of program we will try to understand various aspects of this static keyword okay so here we have a very simple program say we have created a class use static inside the class use static we have created two variables int a is equal to 3 and static int b okay and inside this use static class you have one <laughs> math variable math function which is of type static static void math it accepts one argument from the user and it tries to print that value of x whatever is the value of a and whatever is the value of b this function print prints this three values after this function we created one static scope so this is how you can create a static scope static keyword and you open and close this parenthesis this is a static scope so inside static scope you have written system dot out dot print ln some some line is there and you have written b is equal to a multiply by 4 so whatever is the value of a that is a value of a is 3 so 3 multiplied by 4 that is 12 you assign the value 12 to variable b and then you have written a main function and inside that main function you have given call to the math function this is your math function with one argument <coughs> with one argument 42 so there are few things to learn about this program first one is what is the use of this static scope what is the use of this static scope so static scope or this static block this this static scope or you can refer it as a static block basically this static block gets executed before the main function till now we have seen ki a class gets loaded and your execution starts from the main but if in a program in some case if you want to initialize certain things if you want to display certain message onto the screen before the execution of main or before main starts so you should have a static block created in your program this is how you can create a static block so how this program will work as soon as you uh, i mean execute this program first your use static class gets loaded after that all your static variable gets loaded value of a is initialized to 3 value of b is initialized to 0 for all the static variables if we do not assign any initial value then the initial value for the static variable is automatically assigned as 0 okay so after that after that your static method gets loaded and your static block gets executed so static block initialize this method you will see on the screen whatever the value of a is 3 multiplied by 4 your b is initialized to 12 and after that a main function gets called you call, you give a call to this math 42 so math 42 give call to this function the value of x what is the value of x 42 you have passed the value of this 42 so x is equal to 42 you will see on the screen what is the value of a 3 you will see on the screen what is the value of b 12 you will see on the screen so 
so this is how you can you can have static variable static function or a static what you can say static scope in your program i have a class let me create a program for you theek hai ek program bana ke isko samajhne ki koshish karte hain न्यू डॉक्यूमेंट ओके लेट से आई हैव अ क्लास सैंपल मेरे पास क्लास सैंपल है एंड इन साइड क्लास सैंपल लेट से आई क्रिएट अ नॉर्मल वेरिएबल इंट आई एंड आई क्रिएट अ स्टैटिक वेरिएबल इंट जे बिकॉज दिस वी वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड कि वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन नॉर्मल वेरिएबल आई एंड स्टैटिक वेरिएबल जे सो दैट्स वाई वी हैव क्रिएटेड दिस टू काइंड ऑफ अ वेरिएबल इन माई प्रोग्राम नाउ लेट मी राइट ए कंस्ट्रक्टर डिफॉल्ट कंस्ट्रक्टर डिफॉल्ट कंस्ट्रक्टर एंड लेट मी इनिशियलाइज द वैल्यू ऑफ आई इज इक्वल टू जे इज इक्वल टू लेट से वन मैं i और j दोनों की वैल्यू को वन से इनिशियलाइज कर देता हूं उसके बाद लेट से आई हैव अ क्लास क्लास डेमो इन साइड क्लास डेमो इफ आई राइट पब्लिक स्टैटिक वाइड मेन स्ट्रिंग वेरिएबल एंड इन साइड दैट इनसाइड दैट वट आई डू इज मैं दो ऑब्जेक्ट बनाता हूं एक बनाता हूं सैंपल ओबीजे वन सैंपल ओबीजे टू सॉरी सैंपल ओबीजे वन इज इक्वल टू न्यू सैंपल दिस इज ऑब्जेक्ट नंबर वन सैंपल ओबीजे टू इज इक्वल टू न्यू सैंपल मैं ऐसे दो ऑब्जेक्ट बना देता हूं ठीक है नाउ नाउ इफ आई ट्राई टू प्रिंट हियर सिस्टम डॉट आउट डॉट प्रिंट एल एन ओबीजे वन डॉट आई क्या प्रिंट होगा वन एक मिनट इसको सेव कर देते हैं क्या प्रिंट होगा वन देन इफ आई ट्राई टू प्रिंट कॉपी पेस्ट obj2 obj2 डॉट आई अब क्या प्रिंट होगा वन वन प्रिंट होगा वन प्रिंट होगा नाउ द सेम थिंग लेट मी डू इट फॉर वेरिएबल जे Okay. सबकी वैल्यू वन है ठीक है बिकॉज आई एंड जे इज इक्वल टू वन नाउ हियर वॉट आई एम डूइंग इज ओबीजे वन ओबीजे वन डॉट आई इज इक्वल टू टू मैंने वन ऑब्जेक्ट वन में आई की वैल्यू आई एव रीसेट टू टू okay okay now if yes, i try sir. to now if i try to print i value of obj1 and 2 both ab kya print hoga ek ki value 1 hogi aur dusre ki value 2 print hogi ek ki value 1 hogi dusre ki value 2 hogi theek hai because ek ki value aapne change kar di hai it means i variable is different for obj1 and different for obj2 obj1 mein agar change karoge to obj2 change nahi hota hai 
वेयर एज अब अगर मैं ऐसा करता हूं ओबीजे वन डॉट जे इज इक्वल टू फाइव मैंने वन के इसमें जे को फाइव फाइव इनिशलाइज किया फर्स्ट ऑब्जेक्ट में वैल्यू ऑफ जे इज इक्वल टू फाइव इनिशलाइज किया और अब मैं दोनों प्रिंट करता हूं वन को और टू को इफ आई प्रिंट बोथ लेट सी वॉट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ आई एंड जे सी बोथ आर फाइव बोथ आर फाइव सो वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन नॉर्मल वेरी नॉर्मल वेरिएबल एंड स्टैटिक वेरिएबल सो इन अ क्लास इन अ क्लास लेट सी इफ आई हैव if i have a normal variable int i so when i will create two objects of that class so the copy of variable i the copy of variable i gets created for each object object 1 and object 2 whereas when i say create a static variable static int j so there is only one copy of static variable that is j gets created and these two objects shared that copy so this is the difference between normal static variable uh, normal variable and static variable in a short when you create an object so all the normal variables are there in object say i ka alag copy hai iska second variable mein i is different <coughs> let's say you create third variable so again you have value of i here but static variable hai to static variable is shared by all the objects of a class so when you say object 1 dot i is equal to 5 to iska value 5 hai object 2 dot i is equal to 10 to iska value 10 hai object 3 dot <coughs> dot i is equal to 15 to iska value 15 hai to teeno alag alag hai When you say that uh, obj one object one dot j is equal to five, so its value five is. You have said obj two second object dot j is equal to ten. So its value override will be ten. If one is refer to it, then ten will be ten. This is static variable of a class is shared by all the objects of a class. So in a program, if you need this kind of mechanism, wherein you want all the objects of a class to have uh, shared uh, shared variable to aap kya karenge ki you will create a static variable okay let's say your target is to count the number of objects created in a program okay let's say your target is to create a number of objects created in a program so let's say you create a class सैंपल हमने एक क्लास बनाया क्लास सैंपल ठीक है उसमें हमारे पास एक वेरिएबल हम बना देते हैं स्टैटिक इंट काउंट ओके स्टैटिक इंट काउंट और एक हम बनाते हैं कंस्ट्रक्टर और कंस्ट्रक्टर में हम कर देते हैं काउंट प्लस प्लस This is the simple program we have count plus plus, and we will display. So here we display भी कर देते हैं system dot out dot println count. जो भी count की value रहेगी उस point में वो हम display कर देंगे. Now, <coughs> now. we have another class say class demo class demo usme hum likhte hain main function public static void main string args or a whatever variable you want let's say here i create a object of class sample sample s is equal to new sample to ab aapka count kya hona chahiye we know that whenever we create an object of a class object of a class constructor gets called automatically and this count will be incremented to 1 okay now since you have created one object let us save this program as a 
demo dot java ठीक है so let us try to compile this program let us try to run you will see one because you have created one object okay now if you want to create let's say you create another object say sample s1 is equal to new sample now you have created two objects so what should be the value of count two so when you run this program you will see the count as two so first uh, first one why this first one got displayed sample s is equal to new sample constructor gets called automatically at the time of creation count plus plus zero plus one that is one so you printed one value one for the next line s1 constructor gets called automatically at a time of count creation what was the existing value of count one so one plus one that is two the so system dot out dot print ln that is counting key value are it two so this two you have got why you have got this two because the because it was static mentioned here अब हम क्या करते हैं कि लेट्स से वी रिमूव दिस स्टैटिक कीवर्ड फ्रॉम हियर इफ वी रिमूव द स्टैटिक कीवर्ड फ्रॉम हियर देन इन देन इन बोथ द केसेस यू विल गेट काउंट एज वन ओनली देन इन बोथ द केसेस यू विल गेट काउंट एज वन ओनली इफ यू राइट स्टैटिक हियर देन यू विल गेट काउंट एज वन एंड काउंट एज टू see this is the difference between normal variable <coughs> and static variable so there is another i mean uh, there is a one more way in which by which you can access the static variable and and uh, static method okay normally whatever variables and or whatever the the methods you write in a class you access it with the with the help of objects say box b is equal to new box so normally we access the variables of a class box say b dot height okay or some some method is a method is there to so b b dot volume so normally we access the variables or the method of a class with respect to an object the so object dot variable name or object dot the function name but in case of static variable or a static function you can access the variable the static variable the static variable or the static function by using the class name that is without creating an object of that without creating an object of that class also there is a way to access the static variable and a static member of a class how to do that so you have created one class in the class you have two variables let's say a and b 42 and 99 initialized and both are of say static static variable static integer variable you have one static function static void call me okay and system dot out dot print ln you print value of a this is a simple class you have two variable of static integer one one function static function now there is another class one main function <coughs> now if you want to use this class normally we create an object of that class for demonstrating the, for the sake of demonstration here if you want to call this call me function you can do so by this static demo dot call me what is the static demo static demo is a class name a static demo is the class name so you can do so by calling static demo dot call me let's say here you want to refer the variable b so you can do so by 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 using static demo dot b i mean the class name dot variable name <coughs> because the static variable is we we normally refer it as a class variable because it is created only once for each class 
वेयर एज नॉर्मल वेरिएबल इज क्रिएटेड फॉर ईच ऑब्जेक्ट ओके दैट्स वाई द नॉर्मल वेरिएबल्स आर ऑलवेज कॉल्ड विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एन ऑब्जेक्ट वेयर एज स्टेटिक वेरिएबल यू हैव एन ऑप्शन टू कॉल इट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एन क्लास क्लास नेम डॉट वेरिएबल नेम क्लास नेम डॉट फंक्शन नेम सो दिस इज द सिंपल कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ स्टेटिक वेरिएबल ए स्टेटिक फंक्शन एंड दिस इज अ स्मॉल इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ए स्टेटिक ब्लॉक